In August 1990, the United States imposed economic sanctions on Iraq in order to put pressure on Saddam Hussein to withdraw his forces from Kuwait. However, these sanctions did not affect Saddam Hussein and only affected the Iraqi people. Saddam Hussein lived a luxurious life and owned multiple palaces while the people of Iraq starved to death. In fact, the international sanctions only strengthened Saddam's authoritarian policies and he was now open to use any strategy in order to stay in power. This was demonstrated through the violent repression of the Shia and Kurdish rebellions in 1991. In the 1990s, Iraq was extremely poor. Over half a million children died due to starvation and a lack of medicine. Eight years of the Iran-Iraq war the Gulf Wars and economic sanctions imposed by the United States destroyed the economy and social order of Iraq. In addition, high inflation and the lack of basic necessities led to dissatisfaction, serious poverty and unrest in Iraqi society. The oppressive Saddam regime, wars with Iran and Kuwait, and the American sanctions produced a strong sense of injustice in Iraqi society. During this volatile period, one of the biggest opponents of the Saddam regime was the Islamic scholar and preacher known as Muhammad Sadiq al-Sadr. Muhammad al-Sadr openly spoke out against the Saddam regime until he was assassinated in 1999. After completing his Islamic education, Muhammad al-Sadr became highly politically active and engaged in anti-government activities. As a result, Muhammad al-Sadr was arrested, imprisoned, and tortured multiple times. Muhammad al-Sadr was tortured severely by the Saddam regime, which left him physically handicapped. After being released from prison in 1991 and witnessing the terrible economic situation in Iraq, Al-Sadr created an organization which helped provide basic necessities to poor families and addressed the social problems in Iraq. Muhammad Al-Sadr criticized the religious authorities that remained silent and showed a total indifference to the social, political and economic problems affecting the daily lives of people in Iraq. Muhammad al-Sadr criticized scholars such as Ali al-Sistani for remaining silent in the face of injustice and tyranny. After the 1991 uprising against Saddam was brutally crushed, people were too afraid to speak out against the regime. However, Muhammad al-Sadr did not fear anyone. Initially, Muhammad al-Sadr focused his efforts on social welfare and education and avoided a direct confrontation with the regime. Muhammad al-Sadr used his position as an influential religious authority to implement various social reforms in the slums of Baghdad and in poor areas in southern Iraq. One of these brave reforms was to re-establish Friday prayers in the mosques. 
For many years, Saddam Hussein had imposed a ban on Friday prayers in southern Iraq as they could be used as a rallying point for rebellions and anti-government speeches. Despite threats and warnings from government officials, Muhammad al-Sadr re-established the Friday prayer which had been prohibited for 45 years. Initially, the authorities tolerated the re-establishment of Friday prayers and the government tolerated Muhammad al-Sadr. This is because his speeches were restricted to discussing social issues and criticizing American sanctions against Iraq. However, later on, Muhammad al-Sadr began to use his platform to openly speak out against Saddam and his oppressive policies. Therefore, Muhammad al-Sadr became a huge threat to the regime and they decided to assassinate him. The movement of Muhammad al-Sadr mobilized millions of Iraqi citizens. Thousands of people from all parts of Iraq would attend the Friday prayers at the Kufa Mosque and listen to his speeches. Muhammad al-Sadr also gained the support of the poor and marginalized tribes in the south. As well as having the support of the Shias in Baghdad and poor tribes in the south, Muhammad al-Sadr also gained the support of many Sunnis in northern Iraq who would watch recordings of his speeches. Muhammad al-Sadr rejected sectarianism and stated, There is no Sunni and no Shia, yes to Islamic unity. The Friday prayers of Muhammad al-Sadr in the Kufa Mosque were televised throughout Iraq, which contributed to the mass Iraqi support for him and his cause. Furthermore, the followers of Muhammad al-Sadr videotaped his activities and speeches and distributed them to the Iraqi people. <laughs> Eventually, Saddam Hussein began to send agents to spy on al-Sadr and keep track of his activities. Saddam Hussein felt threatened by his rising popularity in the Shia suburbs and his ability to build an independent power base. As the popularity of Muhammad al-Sadr grew, Saddam began to impose restrictions on him and demanded that Muhammad al-Sadr praised him and prayed for him before starting his Friday sermons. However, Muhammad al-Sadr refused to praise Saddam during his Friday sermons. This infuriated Saddam, who then banned the Friday prayers once again and banned Muhammad al-Sadr from publicly speaking. Muhammad al-Sadr began to receive death threats. Despite all of this, Al-Sadr continued his Friday prayer gatherings and his speeches which addressed the poor economic and social situation in Iraq. After disobeying a direct order from Saddam, Muhammad Al-Sadr knew that death was inevitable and that he had nothing to lose. Therefore, Muhammad Al-Sadr began to wear a white cloth 
which is used to cover dead bodies during Islamic funerals. Muhammad al-Sadr wore this white cloth during every speech he delivered, in order to show the regime that he was not afraid to die. Saddam's agents continued to harass al-Sadr and Saddam now made a move that greatly angered the entire Shia population of Iraq. Saddam placed a ban on the annual Shia pilgrimage to the city of Karbala. Saddam Hussein wanted to limit the number of visits to the city of Karbala because Karbala had been a rallying point for revolutions throughout Islamic history and is the burial place of the famous Islamic revolutionary known as Hussein ibn Ali. Despite this ban, Muhammad al-Sadr encouraged his followers to travel to Karbala. Saddam's security forces reacted by using violence against the pilgrims. After this incident, Muhammad al-Sadr began to openly speak out against Saddam and he compared the incident to a colonial invasion. Muhammad al-Sadr went one step further and publicly read the names of a list of people imprisoned by the Saddam regime. Muhammad al-Sadr even referred to Saddam as a devil. After returning home from Friday prayers on February 19, 1999, Muhammad al-Sadr's car was stopped by armed men and he was shot to death along with two of his sons. After the assassination of Muhammad al-Sadr, a huge rebellion broke out against Saddam. This revolt was brutally crushed and hundreds of people were killed by the Saddam regime. After the death of Muhammad Sadiq al-Sadr, his youngest son, known as Muqtada al-Sadr, became the leader of the movement. When the Americans invaded Iraq in 2003, Muqtada al-Sadr led an armed resistance against the American occupation in Baghdad. Hit <laughs> the